Good afternoon. Welcome to this beautiful Labor Day afternoon. My name is Chief Technical Sergeant Neil Case. Before we get started, I want to know who's excited to see the best underwater show here at the New York State Fair. All right. So, before we get going here, let me introduce the rest of my crew to you. First, coming up behind the tank is my training coordinator out of Albany, Tech Sergeant Josh Cross. All right, next up is the Troop D Assistant Senior Diver Trooper Jared Hogan. And lastly, behind the tank is your very own, the Troop D Senior Diver Tech Sergeant Greg Ebro. All right, I'm gonna forewarn you. The host of your show is gonna need a lot of excitement. He's gonna bring it to you. He's gonna wanna see it back in return. Let's put your hands together for the Troop C Senior Diver Tech Sergeant Seth Little. Hello, New York! All right, great day to be by the pool, isn't it? I am the Troop C Senior Diver. Means I know stuff. And so I'm going to uh, talk to you about the stuff that I know. Let's see here. Do we have any kids that want to sit up here? By the way? We can bring kids up, adults. Yeah. If you right. get out of the if, sun. If, if you want a front row seat, by all means, come over, sit in the shade right in front of the, the tank right up there, okay? Not a lot of room, but there's enough. There's enough. Just don't trip on the ropes. Sword calls out a bad day on the ropes. <laughs> all right. While they're sitting down up there, I'm going to give you a brief little history lesson of the New York State Police dive team. Our first dive was in 1932. That makes us the oldest, and we are also the largest of the public safety dive teams in the whole United States, New York. Now, in 1932, we dove with hard helmets, canvas suits, lead belt, lead shoes, all together. The weight was well over 100 pounds. That being said, troopers did then what troopers continue to do. They used the equipment they were given, and they got the job done. Now in 1943, there was a smart fellow by the name of Jacques Cousteau. Jacques Cousteau invented the aqualung. And that aqualung is what we commonly refer to as SCUBA. SCUBA is an acronym. It stands for Self-Contained Underwater Breathing Apparatus. It took the hundreds of pounds of equipment and it reduced it down to about 40 pounds or so, made divers a little bit more nimbly pimbly in the water, easier to move around. Now in 1952, the New York State Police decided, you know what, we want to look into this new technology, so they sent representatives to learn from the best. They went through the Navy Dive School. And when they learned about scuba and went through that school, they brought their lessons back. In 1957, we decided to adopt scuba as our very own preferred method of dive. And in the early 60s, we started our own novice dive school. The novice dive school is anything but novice. In order to become a trooper, it's a competitive position. You've got to have a lot of hard work and determination that is ingrained in you. But in order to be one of these guys that are on top of the tank, you take those people that are already competitive, you put them in a position, only one third of those that try out will make it. Two thirds will wash out. These guys made it up here. Let's give them a hand. Hey, Seth, I, yeah. I think they might be getting a little warm up there. What do you say we get them in the water? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Before we do, yep. I think we should make it a little more difficult on them. Okay, I'm for that. Yeah. So we'll, go ahead, boss. We're going to have you take that gear off, throw it in the water, we'll have you get to the bottom of the tank. So the gear they have, they're putting down into the water. We do this at the novice school to make sure that they can get dressed underwater and they do not panic, okay? Panic is what will kill a diver. So we want to make sure that all the divers we have, they know how to move under the water without panicking. But also, without it really necessarily being said, divers are very competitive, all right? This is a competition. It's a race. It's a race. All right, so are you ready to see divers in the water? All right. Hey, guys, your masks, come on. Oh, yeah. When we say gear, we mean gear. Put Last your gear in the water. I'm still trying to cheat the system. That's right. Okay. So when I say go, we're going to count down nice and loud. All right, we're going to go three, two, one, dive. So go. Three, three two, two, one, dive. dive. All right, get in that water. Okay. There we go. They're going down there. 
They're flipping around, putting air in their mouth. It's nice and calm. Let's see here who gets it. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Let's see here. Wow. That's a tie. It's a tie. The last show of the, of the fair, we're going to call it a tie. We're going to call it a tie. All right. Very good. They're congratulating each other. Okay. So we're going to slow this down a little bit, go over the scuba equipment piece by piece for you so you know what we're talking about. That tank that is on their back has 3,000 pounds of compressed air, 3,000 PSI. You just cannot breathe that out of the tank. You need a regulator which regulates the air coming out of the tank, it lowers it down to 145 PSI, all right? Which then sends the air down the line to the second stage, which is what they breathe out of on demand while they are in the water. Those tanks are attached to BCD, a buoyancy control device. That buoyancy control device has airtight bladders attached to it, and you can take the air from the tank and you can add it to those bladders. They will inflate. That is positive buoyancy. It brings them up. Those, they also have dump valves on those bladders where they can release the air from them and then they will sink negatively buoyancy. And then these guys right here, they have a perfect mixture of air. They're static in the water. This is called neutral buoyancy. It looks easy. It's not. It takes a long time to develop your skills in order to do this correctly. And because they're neutrally buoyant, their fins that are on their feet propel them nice and easy. We've got a scissor kick there. We've got a frog kick there. It's like being in outer space, just moving yourself around. All right. So the mask that is on their face, that mask protects their eyes, but the lens is far enough outside of the eyeball there that it actually magnifies things underwater. While you're diving, things will seem 33% larger and also 25% closer. Now, when these guys went into the water, they had water in their mask. They didn't have their mask on, so how did they get that out of their masks? Let's show them, fellas. All right, they're gonna take their masks off. Sometimes masks can get ripped off while you're diving. Some things happen, you don't panic, you just put your mask back on, and then you're gonna create a little crack between your upper lip and the bottom seal of the mask. You're gonna blow air out of your nose. When you do that, that air will go up into the mask, and then we'll push the water out and then they'll just recreate the seal and it will they will go about their business. Other things can happen to our equipment when we're underwater and one of the things that can affect it is pressure. We dive to depths of 132 feet before we graduate our school. And you might ask me what 132 feet looks like. All right, very good, very good, all right. So 132 feet, if you look at the top of this tower up here, that is 60 feet tall. Add another tower on top of that, that is 120, 12 more feet, 132 feet. That's a lot of water. And then you have the air pressure on top of that, atmospheric pressure. And so, like I said, things can affect our equipment at those pressures. And we're gonna have Josh Cross here demonstrate, let's say something happens to his regulator. He says to his buddy, hey, my air's not working. First thing, don't panic. Second thing, never dive alone. Have a dive buddy. His buddy comes over, takes his main air, puts it in his buddy's mouth, and then they both start breathing. He goes to a safety second, and then they will ascend to the top of the tank there at 30 feet per minute, which is a nice safe rate as to avoid the bends. All right, so that's some of the things that we learn about scuba, all right? We're going to go into more detail now about our mission. We are an underwater recovery team, URT. Our symbol, if you look at the back of the tank there, is the octopus. If you've ever seen an octopus move over the floor of the water, over the floor of the ocean, it touches everything as it goes over that ocean floor. And we want to be able to say the same thing as divers. When we go into the water, we want to make sure that we look into every crack and every crevice, so when we come up and our boss asks us, we say, yes, we did search everything. Now we have a line search, which helps us complete this task. And there's two variations that I'm gonna show you today. And so I'm gonna need a volunteer, blue shirt, right up there, I saw your hand go up real quick. So come on over, yep, you, come on. All right, what's your name? Brett. Brett. Nice to meet you, Brett. All right, go ahead, hold on to the line now. Let's give Brett a hand. All right, Brett is my land-based specialist. 
All right, he's land operations, and, uh, and he's going to help me complete this dive. This is called a pendulum search. We're going to use the line to be able to create a pendulum motion. I'm going to go back and forth, and Brett's going to keep hold of that line nice and tight. Now, Brett and I will communicate with each other. So, Brett, give me a couple tugs. There you go. And so I'll give him a couple tugs back. Now, he knows that I know that we're all ready to go with the dive here. Yeah, right? We all know. You all know. That's right. All right. So, that being said, I'm going to dive. And what we would use this for is, let's say it's a known body of water. We're looking for something large. Or we might be, uh, be in a hurry. We might have a lost diver or something like that. So, we could have somebody in trouble. All right. So, here we go, Brett. Without further ado, I'm starting my pendulum search. Brett sees that I'm coming to the end of where I can't go any farther, so he gives me a couple tugs. All right, I give him a couple tugs back, and then he's going to release that. No, nope, don't drop it. No, nope, no, nope. that was my bad. My bad. All right, just loosen up your grip there. Give me a little line. All right, now tighten it back up. There you go. And so give me a tug, and I'll give him a tug to let him know I'm ready to go. And so I'm coming back, and as I'm coming back, back I find the lost diver. All right, let's give Brett a hand. Good job, Brett. And you get to choose from the prize box right over there, okay? All right, another search that we might do, it's called the jack stay. The reason it's called the jack stay is because the line stays static. And how it does that is there are two heavy weights on either side of that line. You're gonna separate those weights as far as possible, and those weights are going to create tension. The diver then will hold on to the line, and as he is Moving down the line, he will touch everything that he possibly can on the floor of whatever body of water he is at. So we're gonna have Jared Hogan. He's gonna demonstrate that for us. Yeah, hey, uh, before he gets started with that search, let's have him put that training mask on. Okay, a training mask. So the training mask is to simulate the water that we dive in, which looks like this. Okay, that is what the water looks like. So that training mask is taped off. And then we're gonna need some evidence, Greg. You got any evidence up there? Oh yeah, there it is. Okay. Service revolver. Service revolver, old school. All right, so that being said, Jared is going to commence his dive. He's got evidence. He's got his jack stay search all set up. He's going to go down the line, touching everything. Once he gets to the weight, he's going to move it over just a little bit. Turn around, come back the other way. And then he'll be covering new ground as well as some old ground, but that's okay. It's detail oriented. And let's see if he finds what he is. Look, there it is. Let's get my hand. All right, he found it. 100% success rate. Yeah, yeah, very good, Jared. We're proud of you. It's like you were born for this. Genetics. Yep, yep, yep. All right, I'm going to need another volunteer. All right, now glasses right there. You were, you were Johnny on the spot there. All right, what's your name? Jensen. Jackson. All right, I'm going to call you Jack. Is that all right? Yeah, we've all got right. a couple Jacks. Help us out this <laughs> All right, do you know what, Jackson, do you know what this is? No, this is metal detector. Okay, so hold on to that for me. What is that detecting? No, it's detecting 30 years of marriage. That's what it's detecting. It's detecting my ring. Okay, so we're looking for something metal. And if it's not right on the floor of where we're looking for, if it's under the sand, under the muck, we might use the jack stay, but we would also use a metal detector while we're on that line. So Jackson, come on over here. All right. And so what we're doing is we're simulating you coming down the line. All right. And then, oh, you feel that? A lot, of, a lot of vibrations there. So that means that there's something that we're looking for right there. And I'm not putting my hand in there. That's why you are the volunteer. All right. Yes, you volunteer for this. So go ahead. Stick your hand right in there. Oh, what is that, Jackson? It is. It's a fall. Let's give Jackson a hand. All right. Very good. All right, so Jackson, you get to go pick a prize out of the prize box. So those are some of the old school methods that we have employed over the last several years. But as time evolves, so does technology. And we have some new technology with us today. We have an underwater camera. Okay, why would we use an underwater camera with a robot? Well. The robot that we have with its camera, we're able to put that possibly in, let's say we cut a hole in the ice. And we want to put a robot down there with the camera first to make sure there's no entanglements. Or 
There might be something, let's say the water is caustic. It has some sort of chemical in there or something like that that we don't want to necessarily put a diver in first. Well, that underwater robot goes down in there, makes sure that the coast is clear. We're also looking for a stolen four-wheeler. All right, it comes around. We have a neat little video screen on our, uh, on our computer there where we can see what's going on. And so, boss, without turning around and looking, let me, let me know when you find what we're looking for. All right. All right. He's going to it. And here it goes. He found it. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> we call him the wizard. <laughs> All right, so our robot found what we were looking for. What do we need now? How are we gonna get that out of there? We need a diver. We need people. As much as technology has, uh, has given us certain advantages, people are still important, right? Yeah. People. All right. Now one of the best people I know, Greg Ebrill up there, he is on our surface supply air system. That allows us to provide him endless amounts of air, and it also allows us to have communications with him. More technology. Topside diver, com check. All clear, topside. All right. He, he hears us loud and clear. We hear him loud and clear. And so now we're going to send him down to retrieve that four-wheeler. So are you fit to dive? I guess. You guess so. All right. Well, good. All right. So when you're ready, go ahead, Greg. All right, and he made it down there. Touchdown, give him a hand. All right, we're proud of you, Greg. All right, so he's going to, he's he's waving hi to his boss. Greg, you entangled your line in the robot there. All right. You'll be good? All right, as long as he says he's good, then I'll believe it. So, Greg is over at the four-wheeler. He needs to get that four-wheeler out of there. Greg, how are you going to get that four-wheeler out of there? Got a good idea here. He has a good idea. Hopefully that doesn't give him a headache. All right. That good idea that he came up with is a lift bag. That lift bag, it allows us to introduce positive buoyancy to the four-wheeler. Top side, divers, any bubbles. With that lift bag, he asked for bubbles. Those bubbles will go into the lift bag that he asked for. We sent him down the line to him. It will expand the bag. As that bag expands, it will lift whatever that bag is attached to, and hopefully everything is nice and secure. And the four-wheeler starts to go up. And as it starts to go up, Greg gets out of the way. And congratulations, Greg. 100%. Let's give him a hand. Fantastic hang time. Good job, Greg. Good job. All right. So, boss, you have something to say, right? Yeah, I just want to take a moment to recognize these guys for what they do. Every single time they go in the water, they're putting their lives on the line. As a matter of fact, last month we spent about four weeks searching six acres of water, over 240 dives in zero visibility, looking for a piece of evidence. So every time they go in the water, putting their lives on the line, so if you could please all join me in thanking them for what they do every day. Thanks, guys. All right. Okay. So look, if you want, to, if your kids want to take a picture with the diver up here in front of the diver, we actually have the best poser in the New York State Police in that water right now. Okay. And so, also, if you want a face like my boss, there, he's a very handsome man. All right, you got to be bored with it. I know. I know. All right. But if you want New York State Police merchandise. Over at the NYS T10 or over at the Trooper Foundation, they help support us. We would appreciate it if you supported them. K9 demonstration is going to be coming up. All right, it's not as good as ours, but hey, it's all right. It is what it is. So other than that, have a great day at the New York State Fair.